Yemen marks the fifth anniversary of a deadly war uh, sponsored by Saudi Arabia and its allies. So that's according to the UN. And it has triggered the world's largest humanitarian crisis. The data collection group known as the Armed Conflict Location and Events Data says more than 100,000 people, including thousands of civilians, have been killed in the conflict so far. And Riyadh still keeps conducting airstrikes on the Yemeni people almost on a daily basis. The Saudi coalition has imposed a blockade on Yemen as well. The UN says over 24 million Yemenis are in dire need of humanitarian aid, including 10 million suffering from extreme levels of hunger. Meanwhile, the Yemeni Ansarullah movement has been fighting back by targeting Saudi positions and troops. Marcus Papadopoulos, publisher and editor at Politics First, joins us from London. We also have Jason Anruha, who's a political commentator, joining us from Niagara Falls. I'd like to welcome you both. Marcus Papadopoulos, we're looking at a war that has entered its fifth year. Uh, just yesterday, there was a uh, press conference that uh, the Yemeni army spokesperson uh, displayed the uh, liberation of an area by the name of uh, uh, Jauf, uh, in which it included uh, detaining, killing, uh, or, and or injuring uh, up to 1,200 mercenaries. We keep hearing about achievements by the Yemeni army, but not from the other side, which uh, has superiority when it comes to uh, military assets and hardware. Why do you think that is? Whilst parts of the world are gripped by the outbreak of the coronavirus, the people of Yemen on a day-to-day -day basis continue to be massacred by an invading Saudi military machine, a military machine which is trained and supplied and armed by America and Britain. For the last five years, Yemeni men, women and children have been massacred in their homes, on their roads, at funerals and at weddings. And yet for five years, much of the world, and I'm specifically referring to the West, has turned a blind eye. We are hearing proclamations today but from Western governments, including the liberal democracies of Western Europe, about the need for solidarity in the world to fight the coronavirus. And whilst I agree with that, does that solidarity extend to the people of Yemen? Evidently, no, because even now, whilst there is a serious outbreak of the coronavirus in both the UK and in the US, Washington and London continue to arm the Saudi war machine. They continue to train Saudi pilots. They continue to offer maintenance to the Saudi war machine and spare parts to the Saudi war machine. That is absolutely diabolical, and it demonstrates how British mainstream media and American mainstream media are neither free nor independent, because if they were, then people in Britain and in America would learn from their newspapers, would hear from their news channels about the diabolical plight of the people of Yemen. It is absolutely horrendous what has been happening to the people of Yemen for five years now, and there is no end in sight. Uh, about 48 hours ago, uh, we had reports from the UN, Jason and Ruhe, that uh, much of the hospitals and um, health, uh, I guess, facilities uh, have been targeted. The UN blamed both sides of the conflict for this. God forbid if coronavirus enters that country, which initially had a dilapidated medical system to begin with, and now after five years of war, uh, you have practically nothing left. Um, don't you think that there needs to be more of an international attention to this uh, while uh, simultaneously you're looking at how coronavirus has caught the world's attention, but here we have uh, deaths that are over 100,000, and this again, uh, be prior to coronavirus, hopefully won't enter the country, but prior to the coronavirus entering that uh, country. 
Well, I think it's absolutely necessary that the world does pay attention to what's going on right now inside of Yemen. They've needed to pay attention to what has been going on for, you know, since 2015. This absolutely inhuman, monstrous war against the people of Yemen for merely disposing of their leader, Hadi, who was, uh, by many accounts, an unjust man. This is all about trying to get that that one particular man who was a backing of many foreign interests, many of them who uh, were Saudi Arabia linked. I mean, as the world is facing this coronavirus right now, this is facing a, a terrible outbreak across the entire world. Uh, actually, because of this, the uh, the healthcare in uh, is a probably not existent due to the ongoing blockades, sanctions, and you know repeated almost daily, as you said, bombings of the country. I mean, this is an absolutely inhuman way of doing this. This is a crime against humanity. Yet those in the international community who are supposed to be the regulators of these conflicts, those who are supposed to mediate situations like this, are seem feel to just blame the victims in this case. It's their fault. It's the Saudis' fault. It's, uh, you know, nobody can really be blamed. But this very clearly is the Saudis' fault. No one is forcing them to invade. To Yemen. No one is forcing them to hire mercenaries and barbarous acts against what are people trying to defend themselves from a multiple foreign powers, not just Saudi Arabia, but Israel, the United States, and the UK as well. It is laughable almost uh, insulting to say that both sides bear responsibility in this situation when you have this tiny small country trying to defend itself from several global powers and all they're trying to do is maintain their independence their own right to determine uh their own uh, self-determination and this uh this 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 uh plot this ongoing uh attack against them and especially deliberately targeting their healthcare system is, is nothing more than showing the bald face of evil that is the international coalition against the Yemeni people. Finally, quickly, Marcus Papadopoulos, you have another uh, front to the war that uh, may have opened and it still could be uh, in the early stages and that is uh, the way that the UAE and Saudi Arabia uh, have parted ways when it comes to the uh, uh, Southern Transitional Council. It's the separatists that the UAE has actually supported uh, much to the chagrin of Saudi Arabia. And Socotra Island is actually a place where American forces actually uh, were deployed. It seems like the UAE wants, to, wants that area and wants the ports, um, but people are saying, uh, or analysts are, are concluding that this is another front to the war. Um, what does that spell uh, when you have these two who are leading the war uh, have a major difference on? Well, that sort of development really does epitomize so-called humanity, not just in the region, but in the world. Because every day for the last five years, men, women and children have been killed. They have died agonizing deaths. Trauma is widespread throughout Yemen because of the actions of the Saudi war machine, which is backed by America and Britain. And yet, despite the catastrophic humanitarian disaster affecting, plaguing Yemen and the people of Yemen, there are countries in the region that are looking to benefit economically, that are looking to increase their geopolitical, geostrategic importance in the region all at the expense of the suffering of people. That really says a great deal about human nature, or let me be, uh, let me be more specific, about the nature of a great many people, not just in the region, but in the wider world, regardless of their ethnicity and regardless of their religion. There is a catastrophic disaster in Yemen, and yet, much of the world is not just oblivious to that suffering, much of the world is indifferent to it. Shame on the so-called humanity. Thank you for that. We'll end it there. Marcus Papadopoulos, publisher and editor at Politics First, and thank you, Jason and Ruha, political commentator there.
And that does it for our news review. Thanks for tuning in.